here on the Brush by Brandy Facebook page and on my YouTube channel. My name is Brandy and I'm the owner and artist behind Brush by Brandy. Um, my husband Sean is here behind the camera. He's going to help us answer any questions tonight as we go. We are going to do some painting tonight. So I showed you guys a little earlier on my page this piece that we're going to be working on and it's a really pretty piece of furniture. It had already been painted so a lot of what you see already has a coat of paint on it and um, by that I mean these legs here um, are the finish that I got this piece in. So it was a white finish, uh, very distressed. And so what I've done to this piece so far, obviously you can see I've taken off the hardware. Um, I gave it a really good cleaning. Um, we worked on this piece a couple weeks ago. I did strip the top with you guys. The top has a lot of flaws in it. So as we continue working on this piece together, we will work on this piece, uh, the top at some point, but we're gonna work on the body tonight. So this came to me with a white painted finish. And when I'm looking at pieces of furniture and whether I will con uh, consider taking home a painted piece of furniture, um, I look for pieces that don't have a wax finish. And um, this is something to consider even when you're refinishing pieces of furniture. If it has wax over top, the wax usually needs to be taken off before you paint over it again. Unless you're gonna be doing like a distressed look or you want a, um, a resist on the surface to get some, some distressing where the paint will easily remove. A wax is a resist on the surface and so it doesn't generally take new painted finishes very well. They're not going to adhere properly. So, um, so this one does not have a wax finish and I can tell that just by usually feeling it with your hand. You can tell how it's been sealed. This one does have a clear coat finish. Um, sometimes you can also take your fingernail and scrape over the top of it. You'll coat, pick up some of that wax buildup. You can also take um, mineral spirits will remove wax. So if you want to see if you remove, you know, how it removes and what it um, cleans down to, you can try that. But this has a clear coat finish. I can tell just by how it feels. It doesn't have a, the feel uh, of a wax, which is usually kind of sticky, almost a little bit kind of thick. You can tell usually when a painted finish has been with wax. Look, nobody likes wax or dirty legs. Okay? I do like a wax finish, but it is something to really consider because if you might down the line want to refinish that piece of furniture again. Now there are some paints that say go ahead and put it over the wax, um, but I would always just be leery because it's going to wear a little bit differently having wax underneath. So um, especially if it's an oil based wax. So it's just something to consider. If you think later you might want to refinish that piece of furniture again, just be aware you might have to remove that wax. So I usually use a clear coat finish and then it takes away any um, hesitation down the line to have, if you need to repaint the piece. So what I've done to this body, because this had a distressed finish on it, it's really highly distressed. There's a lot of that wood showing through. I did put a coat of white primer over the drawers. The reason for that is we're going to be using some decoupage on this. Let me show you the paper that we're going to be using. Oh man, Brandy's a fan of that. Not only watching on your phone, but watching on the oh, big screen. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, you guys know how I feel about that. It's Coming to an IMAX soon. Like every girl's worst nightmare is what you look like on an 80 inch. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that anyone who says that only has like a 16 inch television. All right, Renee, yeah. let's, let's hear it. Does this still? <laughs> okay, so the, tube. the paper that I'm going to be using on this piece is from Mint by Michelle, and this paper is called Foil Birds. So if you guys have seen this paper before, it is gorgeous. And I've been saving it for just the right piece. Um, and I feel like this is it. I'm committing. Do you, you guys ever get pieces like that where you have something so pretty and then it make you get nervous to use it? That's how I feel about this paper. It's beautiful. It actually has a uh, metallic in it along with a, it's got a soft blue background, like a, like a duck egg blue background. And then the flowers are a, a gold, a nice, pretty metallic gold. And there's different shades of gold. So it looks like it's catching the light differently. It's just a really pretty paper. So I'm going to be using that on this desk. And I think I'm going to pretty much wrap any flat surface in the paper. So by what, what I mean by that is, these drawers are a nice flat front. I'm going to do this drawer here. The legs will get painted, but the body is also nice and flat. So I think I'm going to wrap this around the edge. I do have three pieces of this paper to work with, and I think that's going to be enough. Monica over on YouTube says, hi, it's been a while. Hi. So she's finally catching you again. Yeah. And now she's the only one making comments. So I, I can't avoid it. Okay, so I went ahead and put a coat of white primer underneath to hide the distressing that was on these drawers. 
because when you do decoupage, having white underneath is going to make those colors in the paper the most saturated that they can be. So tonight we're gonna to go ahead and apply the paper to the drawers. So we'll start there, I think. I think oh, we'll I start see someone there. sent stars. Oh, thank you. I think they just want my special effects. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's what they want. <laughs> Okay, one thing I'm going to do really quick is when I got this piece, the drawers are in the position that they were when I got the piece. Um, but I think maybe they could have been swapped around at some point. They weren't marked, and I think they might fit better in some other spots. So I'm going to try that. Um, I'm going to try swapping the top drawers and see how those go in. So don't be afraid to swap your drawers around. If you feel like they could have a better placement, I'm just going to see how these go on the opposite side. That one, that one's pretty they, good. They hit. And this one gets a little sticky right. I don't know, it was just that top drawer being out. All right, so I might need to shave down the bottom of these drawers because I do see that they're rubbing a little bit. And once I put paint on here, you can see here, there's no clearance between this top drawer and this bottom drawer. So I'm going to want to shave down this drawer, uh, either the top of this one or the bottom of this one a little bit so that when I put paint in here, these aren't rubbing. It's just going to rub my paint off. So I can pretty much plan that I'm going to need to do that. Oh, thank you, Paula. Hey, Paula, how are you? She's the one that sends stars. Oh, thank you. And I can tell already that this has been rubbing for a while because that old white paint finish that was on here, it's rubbed down. The other thing let me show you guys on here that I'm going to need to do is when this was painted originally, they did not hesitate to get it onto the drawer sides. So I'm going to do this last, but I'm going to sand this back to the wood so these drawer sides are nice and clean and fresh wood. It's on every side of each drawer. Every drawer has white paint all over the sides of it. So that's an easy change too. These are just things I look for when I'm um, getting the piece ready for paint is those kind of things that I will need to do. All right, so placement of my paper, and I am gonna be a little nervous doing this. So I look at things like this. Okay, you might think, let's start in the center and center my paper, but what's gonna happen there is then I will end up with a seam down the middle of this drawer and a middle of that drawer. Okay, so I don't really like that option. I think I'm going to start with this 90 degree corner and I'm going to line my paper up here with a 90 degree corner and I'll make a cut. And then I should be able to get, I'll get across this drawer here. Okay, and then I'll have a scrap here. And then I think I'm going to be able to take this bottom section and I'll put that over on that end. Now this paper does have a um, repeat pattern on it. And what that means is I can line this up, this paper up either I'm trying to hold this at the same time. I can line the paper up either uh, vertically, um, I'm sorry, horizontally or vertically, and this pattern will line up. So where I am on the drawers over here, so for example, I'll have a clean edge here, and then I'll take the, my next piece and I'll wanna line that pattern up. Okay, and I'll line, I'll line it up so my pattern is, is fairly continuous. One thing I'm going to notice right here is I'm not going to decoupage this lip around the drawer. I'm going to paint this. So I'm probably going to bump my paper up a little bit. I will just end up cutting that off. And I'm going to do that for the purpose of making my pattern continuous. Where's that paper from again? This is from Mint by Michelle. Let me show you guys her. So mintbymichelle.com will tell you anywhere you can find retailers. There are retailers in the US, uh, it's, she's in Australia. The reason I'm gonna be using it by Michelle uh, on this piece is because I'm actually going to Australia what? in a month. Huh? Yeah, we are going to Australia in a month. And we're going to be doing a show there that I'm super excited about. I've been working on my projects for that. Uh, so all that's gonna be out pretty soon. Should and... I alert the authorities the circus is gonna be in town? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, so I'm super excited. So we will be traveling again. This time we are taking the family and we are going to Australia and we're going to be doing an event at, Mint by, at, at the Mint by Michelle shop. Um, we've got a really a bunch of great sponsors. One of them is Annie Sloan. And so I'm going to be using Annie Sloan uh, clear coat on this piece for my decoupage adhesive. So now that I've worked out my rough placement of this, um, I'm going to start getting ready to lay my paper. 
the things I have out when I'm going to do decoupage, I have out my clear coat. That's what I'm going to use as my adhesive. I have out one of these guys, which is a, um, it's a decoupage tool. These are actually, I get these off of Amazon and they're actually for laying, um, what, like window film, like um, window, window tinting. tinting. I also see or people wrap, use them or, yeah. uh, to wrap cars. Do you guys ever watch those vehicle or those videos where people are wrapping vehicles? I no, love not, those videos. Not that wrap. Yeah, no, not not, not that not kind of wrapping. Wrap. Autom automotive wrap. So the, this is a cool tool. Um, so I have that out. I have a nice sharp razor knife. Make sure you have a new blade in your razor knife. This is just a hardware store razor knife, but I like these because I can replace the blades cheaply and easily. That looks brand new. Uh, yeah. So clearly I said right before my life, hey, Sean, I need a really sharp razor knife. And this is what he brings me. Okay. Um, this paper that comes extra in the package with, with the Mint by Michelle papers, keep this because I'll show you guys what you can use this for when you're doing your decoupage. But I have out this extra sheet of paper and then some sort of plastic. A lot of people use plastic wrap. I'm going to use my packaging from my paper. So I'm going to take out this um, label that's in here and I'm going to use this packaging as a tool. So literally everything it comes with becomes a tool for me. The extra paper and then the package. And then I also have out a brayer, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull these drawers out away from my body. This paper, I have the larger size of this. Let me tell you the dimensions on this one. So Karen wants to know, you're putting on the paper uh, before you adjust the I trim? Am, I am. Or make it fit better? Um, I am. Uh, well, I mean, you don't have to do it, but in this case I am, cause that's what I have done right now and we are on camera. So yes. yeah. The, uh, the alternative is yes, sand, you can sand that drawer down, but but I'm okay. I'm still in an okay stage where I can just take these drawers out because I'm going to decoupage this and then I'm going to pull these drawers out and I'll be able to um, sand it. I'm going to have to sand the edges from my decoupage paper anyways. Um, so it's still, I still am in a good phase where I feel like there is not necessarily a right or a wrong order, but that's the order that I'm going to do it in. Okay, this paper is 23 inches. Um, by 33 wide okay so that's my dimensions it does come in a smaller size too but i'm going to take my anti sewing clear coat and i'm choosing this one because it's nice and thick and i do like a nice thick decoupage medium and i'm going to go ahead and apply a nice thick coat of this to my drawer front <laughs> Aaron, i'll just trust you on that <laughs> yeah i don't i you know it's really easy. It yeah, doesn't, it's it a doesn't really matter. easy change that I can still make. Um, so I'm not worried about it, but yeah, absolutely. You could also sand it down beforehand. I'm going to take these drawers out no matter what. I'm going to make sure my clear coat that I'm putting on here, I want a nice ample coat, but I don't want it, you know, lumpy or anything like that. If you get any little nubs of anything in there, make sure those are removed because that will be under your paper and it will create texture in your paper. All right, this always makes me nervous, guys. So now I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to find my placement, which I did want to put it up just a little bit higher than my actual drawer. So I'm going to go ahead and push these back in. I need to pull them out again. And I'm going to find this 90 degree corner. And then we're just going to go right over your shoulder. No big deal. All right, and I'm not going to put the whole thing down. So I'm just going to find my one side. I'm lining it up at the top at the same time. And I'm going to work from one side, smoothing my paper as I go. Once the paper gets wet, it's going to want to have a tendency to wrinkle. I'm going to shut this door because it's kind of in my way. A second set of hands is always super helpful with this. I'm going to take my decoupage tool. And I'll lightly work this. Uh, the mint papers are really pretty forgiving. It is a tissue paper, but they're pretty durable. Okay, and so what I told you you can use these um, this extra paper for is when I'm putting friction over the top of this with my decoupage tool, I don't want to over rub that. But I can put this extra paper over the top and it gives me more freedom to be able to rub that paper without rubbing the inks at the top of my, my actual decoupage paper. So it preserves my paper underneath. So I'm at about the halfway mark on my drawer. 
I don't want this section right here attached just yet, so I'm gonna pull this back, but see, it gave me that ability to do that. And I'm gonna pull this back a little bit and I'm just gonna slowly work this. As the paper gets wet, it's going to start to stretch. You can lightly mist your paper with a mister bottle and that will help actually add the stretch into the paper. And now that I've got this much done, I feel like I might want to do that. So I'm going to grab my mister bottle. I'm going to sit right here. All right, you do that. It's upside down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> All right, you can also use this plastic and I can use this to work over the top of the paper. Got a little wrinkle in there, so I'm just gonna pull it back a little bit. Okay, but anything that I can use to keep from having friction on the top of that paper, that's what I'm doing with the plastic or that extra sheet. Okay, so that's a pretty smooth application right there. All right, and I like that. So I'm going to come back with my razor knife. And I'm going to go ahead and make this cut along the edge of my drawer. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and also make this cut at the bottom. This is going to release my paper. It's a little bit wet right there where it's touched the clear coat, so I just go on that spot really gently and then I can pull this paper away. Oh, I missed a spot up here. Doesn't want to cut, of course. All right, there we go. All right, so that's my first drawer. I'm going to go ahead and cut this little piece off the top. And I only made that little um, adjustment there just so I could continue my pattern around the sides of my piece and be able to match up the pattern. Okay, so I'll pull this piece away. Now I'm going to let this dry. Okay, I've got a little corner here. That was when I was trying to uh, cut that, so I will need to touch that up with a little bit of my blue paint, but that's okay because that's gonna be my body color anyways. <laughs> So now I'm going to pull this drawer out and I'm going to go ahead and seat my edges and I'm going to go ahead and put a clear coat over the top of this too. I'm going to do it very gently. This is going to seat my paper. So this is not from redesign. No, this is from this is a mint by Michelle paper. And then for those that were worried that the bird was upside down. Um that's okay. It's because what you're using it for is just the face, not the whole, you're not coating the whole piece, so you're fine. Okay, so I've got my one drawer done. I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to use, it's okay only because I'm not using that section of the paper on this particular section right here. I'm going to smooth out my clear coat. Where's that label again? I'm going to flash this. It's about the only time I'm going to flash a camera. So. It's called Foil Birds. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm gonna repeat the process onto the second drawer. And I'm gonna take my same piece of paper a little, oh, that's from my hardware. Let me make sure I get that off before. Okay, have a little like thing stuck in my paint from my old hardware. And I wanna make sure I don't have any lumps or bumps. Okay, and then I'll take that same sheet of paper. No, you won't. I'll move this drawer out of the way because it does have wet clear coat on the front and I don't wanna to touch it. Yeah. I'm going to find that same corner. This one, I don't need to make any adjustment on my spacing, so it's much nicer when I can just work with this 90 degree corner. All right, I'm not happy with my placement, so I'm going to go ahead and pull it back and do it again. Just across the top, I didn't have a straight line. You really get kind of maybe one chance that I can do that. And then I'm going to take my deck brush tool and I'm going to smooth this across. Okay, my paper's getting a little firm, so I'm going to just go ahead and loosen it up with a little tiny mist of water. Okay, I'm going to make my cut. Just running my blade right along the edge of my drawer. All of my drawer sides are white right now, but they are going to be painted in the blue. All right, and Sean's job here is done. Yes. You're off for All the right. night. All right, I'm out of here. All right, and I'm gonna take my plastic. You can also take your plastic wrap and you can do kind of like this. Okay, so anywhere that you need to rub, create a barrier between your hand and the paper. I've got a little bit of excess along the top and also along this edge, but I'm not gonna trim that yet. I'm gonna wait till I'm completely done and this is dry and then I'll come back and I'll sand the edges. So I think this second dry I actually like much better even than the first one. All right, so that looks really good. Okay, and then I'm gonna let this dry. Once it's dry, that clear coat's gonna harden and I'll be able to lightly sand the paper from the edges and get a nice clean edge. But I'm gonna go over the top of this with my clear coat. There may be parts of this where I get to and my pattern doesn't match up exactly like say if I was going from this drawer to that drawer. I'll, I'll probably try to make it match up on the front, but when I wrap the, the sides, if I'm running out of paper, I won't be quite as particular about that. I'll make this the parts that are the most visible have that match up first. I've got a little air bubble here that I'm going to see if I can get out. There we go. Oh, we're really getting in personal for you. All right, and I'm going to let this dry. So I'm going to put these up here so you can see my top drawer and my bottom drawer. I'll set them on top of, of each other. Good. And this is also another option, too, that you can take your drawers out and I could apply the paper to them like this. Okay, so I'm going to have, like, that's a really cool pattern that it created. The gold's going to be really pretty when this is all nice and dry. All right, and now I'm going to start getting my paint on this. So that's going to be my overall application, but I want to paint the body of this piece also. So I'm going to take this drawer out because this drawer is going to have decoupage on it as well. Put my clear coat over here, up here so I don't knock it over. What? I'm actually going to move these drawers too. All okay, because I don't want to hit them or anything. And we are going to paint the body of this. Let me show you what colors I'm going to use. So I'm going to use um, my Michelle paint and this color is called My Frenchy Blue. I have two cans of it. This one's new, but I'm going to use the one that I've got that's partially empty first. 
So my Frenchy blue is like the perfect color for the background. And then I'm gonna use butter icing. And because I plan to do a metallic treatment on the legs of this piece. So butter icing is what I'm gonna use where I want the metallic to go underneath. So let me open this. I've already uh, stirred this up really well. Paint can opener would work much better. Here's one, I got one. Much easier. Sometimes I try to open my cans with a screwdriver. It just takes longer. I've got to do like 20 mm -hmm. pops around the top. I just use my teeth. Okay, and the parts I want to paint are going to be like here and around this edge, around this edge. I want to do the legs. But over here where I'm going to have that decoupage paper, that is going to be, I'm going to leave that white because I want to have that white color underneath. I am going to go inside of this piece. For sure. So where I'm painting is, you can see here, I've got this piece of, there's a piece of wood right here. This chunk right here, I will make sure this gets painted. I'm going to have to shave my drawers probably on this part too, because they fit tight enough with this body that it's not going to allow me to have paint in here. Okay, I want to get this little piece of trim molding on this edge. All right, sorry, Facebook, we're going to go on a little journey. If I go a little bit underneath where the edge of my paper is going to go, that's okay. And this is just my first coat, so I am going to plan on that I will see some of that white underneath still. Um, I'm going to need two coats on this. Okay, and then I'm gonna go inside the body and I'm gonna do under this part too. I will probably need to shave all four sides of these drawers to allow, to make an allowance for this paint. So I'm just gonna plan on that, that when I trim that decoupage down, I'm gonna shave the whole drawer down a little bit. And then once, once the drawer is shaved, I'll also um, paint around the edges of my drawers and sand those sides where it had the white paint on it too. I'm not gonna be too worried about getting a uh, paint onto the top of this piece. I stripped this down to the bare wood, but it's in really poor shape. So I'm gonna have to do something to the top of this piece, either a faux finish. I haven't really decided yet. If I wanna keep the wood look, I'm going to have to do some sort of faux treatment on it. If I want to go ahead and paint it, I might just do that and just have a top that matches my paint finish. Okay, so that's the basic paint layout that I'm going to have on the front of the piece. And this is going to go down my legs, but only to about the halfway point. I'll show you why. I'm going to get this into all these molded details. These are going to be really pretty, but I'm going to put in some metallic on this, I told you. And the metallic that I want to use, I'm going to pull out the soft gold that's in the background of that paper, um, but I don't want an overt like antique gold. Antique gold has a lot of brown or maybe even green in it. Do a resin pour on the top. I'm going to use a white, a white gold. Um, do I want to resin pour this top? I could resin pour this top. It would drip over the edges nice. I do have this one drawer that has, this is the- you have enough, enough stuff for yeah, I do have a resin pour I have to do already, and actually too. Um, um, this drawer has a top on it. I'd have to take this top off and pour it separate because it doesn't have enough of an overhang right here. Anyway, this drawer right here is a little weird. Um, it has the wood top on it too. So I'd have to make this match whatever my top is. I don't know. I haven't quite decided. If I was going to leave it wood, I would probably have to use like retique it. Retique it's like a, a liquid wood. And I do have some that I've been wanting to play with. I so yes, as far as shaving the drawer down, you just sand the drawer. Yes, I will just sand all four uh, sides around the edges of the drawer. So I told you guys, actually I got distracted. I was going to show you. I'm going to use white gold leafing. And 
I have this package here. This is just off of Amazon. Let me show you guys an example. If I can find the white gold and not mess up everything else in here. I think this is the white gold. It's just a pale, softer version of gold. So can you guys see that? It doesn't have a, a yellowy or brown antique gold. I'm gonna use this white gold. It's gonna be my metallic. And I'm gonna be using this along with, uh, I'm gonna do something on the hardware with it too. So that's gonna be my metallic accent. And I want to, um, I'm gonna actually use paint for it on the legs. I'll use the leafing on the hardware. So down here on these legs, I'm gonna use a color called Butter Icing. This is gonna be the base because it's the closest to my metallic color that I wanna use. So down here where I want the, the gold to blend up into the blue, I'm gonna put a base of Butter Icing underneath. And this is a creamy off-white color. Oh, am I in your way? So I'm going to stir this and then I'm going to get a different brush. So I painted to about the halfway mark. It's not exact. Stirred my paint. And this is going to be the color that I put underneath. It's almost a soft yellow. When I paint um, spindles like this leg, I'm using a horizontal brush stroke and I'm just kind of wrapping it around that leg. It's going to take me again two coats to get full coverage on this and then I'm going to blend it into this blue. So I'm going to come try back. not to get any on the carpet please. Yes, yeah, sorry. I know this needs to go back in the living room tonight. My um what I paint underneath my piece is a it's a carpet, it's an old rug. But when it got too ugly for the house, I just brought it out here and it became a drop cloth. I can vacuum it. All right, so I brought that blue down a little bit more and I'm just gonna roughly blend these together. It doesn't have to be exact. It's a little high, so I'm gonna bring the blue down a little bit more. So I'm going to be using, we'll do, we'll do the metallic on the legs next week when all my paint is dry. I'll show you what? how I'm gonna do the metallic next week. Come on. All right, so that looks good. It needs another coat on it, but let's go ahead and come across and work across the center of this piece. I know Sean totally just got comfortable. As soon as I see him relaxing, I'm like, oh, I better gotta, move. You gotta yeah. do it up, gotta change it. All right. I just can't wait for you to see all the snafus when you watch this back. Oh, great. Because your head just gets right in the way. So most everything along the body of the piece, I'm gonna keep in this solid color. Getting really good coverage from this, the My Frenchy Blue. Over that white, and this doesn't have primer on it. This is just the old paint finish on here. I only put the primer on the drawers where, I, where it had distressing and I wanted to um, put that paper on because I didn't want the, the brown of the distressing showing through my paper. Okay, and here I'm going to try to make, there is no piece of wood here, so I'm just going to make a clean line. <laughs> if someone wants to buy this, would you sign it? I always, uh, well, I, I haven't done my last couple, I don't think. Um, but I do put a, um, a mark on the back, and then I usually put a label on the piece, and I'll sign the label. Oh, there's that hit again. Sorry. Try to move my hair out of the way, at least it won't, that won't be hanging down. Okay, so all the way underneath this piece, and I even get underneath here on desks too, because you don't want to be like, you know, if you're laying on the floor or something, you don't want to see the underside of your desk and see that it's wood under there. So even that gets painted. Um, I can see the original paint job on this. I have to get way back here. Sorry, guys. Yeah, get in there. I'm keeping my brush strokes really nice and clean. I don't even dare to move. Hang on, I'll be out of here in a second, guys, sorry. Okay, really nice and clean, so they're nice and straight, but the orig this original paint job, it's got overspray underneath 
and it's not painted under there. It doesn't look very nice. So I just like to have the underside of the desks painted. So um, as it's drying, I've still got pretty good coverage, but I can see a little bit of my white underneath there. So that tells me that I'm definitely gonna need to have that second coat. take these drawers out. I can decoupage these out of the body. I left them in the body so you guys can see easier on camera. And now the paint once again is from where this and what from, color? The paint is from Mint by Michelle and I'm using two colors. I'm using my Frenchy blue is the soft blue, this kind of duck egg blue that I'm putting on the body. And then I'm blending it, it into um, butter, was it? butter icing which is this soft yellow that's that I'm going to be putting that white gold over the top of. <laughs> There's a few that throw me off because they go between Facebook and uh, YouTube. I'm going to take this. Is this of, a custom piece for someone or is this, uh, this on the open market? This one will be available when I'm done with it. This is just, I just wanted to um, use my, that paper that I got. And I wanted, it has a really kind of romantic feel to it. And so it had to be the right piece. And I love the shape of this desk. So when I'm done, this one will be available. I've got to reach all the way back in here. Sherry's really loving your uh, pretty hair. Yeah, thanks. I really need to get it done and I need to find a new hair lady. You guys know what a task that is to find a new hair person? I can only imagine. Yeah, I'm dreading it. I'm dreading it, but... It, just in case my my old hair lady watches i don't want to say anything i don't know i feel like she, lately she just hasn't been nailing it she's kind of distracted right now <laughs> so in case she's watching yeah. but yeah i don't think she does i'm pretty <laughs> sure she doesn't she's on instagram but i don't think facebook and i don't think she watches my youtube so she's never told me if she does well that makes two i mean one of us and yeah. not only that but she's like an hour away from my house so I've been putting this off for a while since we moved like five years ago and I feel like, okay, it's finally time. I want to do some different stuff. It's time. All right. Can't touch that leg. So I'm going to turn this a little bit, can't touch this. get inside here. So I'm not actually painting that much on this piece. This piece is mostly going to be the paper and then the metallic treatment that I'm going to do on the legs. You guys will see more of that when I come back next week. I'll have all this paint job finished everywhere that I'm putting the, the base coat now. I'll get a second coat on here. And then we'll be able to move on to the next steps when we work on this together next week. Okay, so I'm going to get under this lip. Not sure again what I'm going to do with the top. It's, um, I stripped it down. I don't want my paint to go that far. Stuff like that, the paper is semi-translucent, and so I at least want to have a nice clean line right there. Because I don't want it to show, it'll show through as like a dark spot under my paper. Okay, and this is all going to be painted here, all this detail. But this is going to have my paper, so I'm going to leave that in the white. Basically just my trim is what I'm painting, and that's just so it will match my paper. Um, Oh man. Yeah, so next week when we come back, I plan that I will have all this two coats of paint on it. And we might I might do save like a drawer and we'll show the paper again. And then we'll go ahead and do some metallic on this piece too. So on the top. <laughs> I finally found a hairdresser. She hasn't had a real haircut since they moved to Texas. Yeah, it's hard. Like I I I don't even want to try because I'm like you got to go through that like kind of trial phase with your new hairdresser. I do that every So you kind of have to be at a month. phase where you're like, well, if it gets messed up, it gets messed up. <laughs> and I'm, I don't think I'm there because I got it. I got to do this trip to Australia, right? I don't want to go with messed up hair. Again, I do that every month. <laughs> yeah. I cut my boy's hair at home. So I, uh, I can blend paint, but I can also do a mean fade with it on a haircut. Some of us, you just took it too far. <laughs> yeah, Sean still goes to the hairdresser. I don't know why. It's probably because by the time I'm done cutting the boys, I'm like, anyone else want a haircut? <laughs> He's like, no, I'm good, I'm good. And then he goes to he goes Racing to like stripes and... he goes to like super cuts the next day. I'm like, I thought you didn't want a haircut. All right, so I just did that soft, same soft blend on this leg. I need to do the other side, but I can't quite see it without turning the piece. 
I'm gonna do that on all four legs. And then, yeah, I think we'll work a little bit more on the paper next week, but I'm gonna let this paint dry. I'm kind of getting short on time. So, so that's my plan. Anywhere that's not gonna have the paper is going to have this finish. My legs are going to get that butter icing at the bottom so that I can put that soft gold over the top of it. And I'll have two coats when we come back next week. Um, and we'll wrap this piece up with some a little more details. I don't know, I really gotta think on this top, it might end up just getting painted. Um, I stripped it down, it's really uneven. It's not a high quality wood, it's just a pine. And it's a really uneven pine. It's got a lot of, it's not staining on it, um, it's just got a lot of dark spots in it. And so to get it to clean wood, I would have to probably either bleach it or do like a faux treatment on it. I think it might just get painted, but we'll see. We'll see. Bam. Not decided on that. I'm just let, I'm just going to marinate with it for a while right now. It also has some damage. Since this piece was already refinished, I can tell that somebody has sanded at it before. And I've got a couple spots that they've gone through the veneer on. So when I stripped it down, I was kind of disappointed to see all that, but sometimes you just never know until you get the paint off what it's going to look like under there. It's not ideal. All right, you guys. Um, so check out Mint by Michelle paint and papers at mintbymichelle.com. Like I said, I'm going to be over in Australia doing a workshop uh, next month in November. November, um, the weekend of November 10th is when our workshop in Australia will be. That actually is already sold out. It's sold out in one day. So I barely even got the chance to talk about it. But now that it's coming up, You're welcome. Um, I get to show like what we're going to be working on and stuff. So that will all be coming up. Um, so check out Mint by Michelle paint and papers at mintbymichelle.com. Butter icing and my Frenchie blue are the two colors we're using. And then the paper is called foil birds. Tons of retailers all over the United States. Um, there was a bunch in uh, UK. Uh, there was one in South America, it looked like. Australia, obviously, she's over there. So definitely some retailers, and they do ship. All right, you guys. I'm going to pop off, and I will catch you guys next week. I do have a video coming out on my YouTube channel, so check out Brush by Brandy on YouTube, and I will catch you guys next week.